I just got the new Garmin Verb XE action camera and I'll spare you the suspense. The video and the audio is fantastic. It's just perfect. I can't believe it. The data in the overlays is pretty badly off at times, but I'm sure Garmin will fix that. I had a Garmin Verb Elite that I liked a lot, except the audio was horrible. In fact, it was so bad, I ended up selling it and buying a GoPro Hero 4 Silver, which I really liked. However, I missed the overlays such as the speed, heart rate, percent grade, altitude, etc. So when the XE came out, I decided to give Garmin another try. The two most important things I want in an action camera are good video at 1080p, 60 frames a second, and good audio. Bonuses would be if it were waterproof without a case, or if it needed a case, would have good audio in the waterproof case, which the GoPro does not. The Verb does. I also would like easy to use settings and menus, which the Verb has. The GoPro doesn't, unless you have a data back. I also want display of speed, heart rate, cadence, altitude, all that stuff. And although you can actually merge GPX data with video, from any GPS and any action camera manually and sync things up with Garmin Verb Edit, it's really a pain in the ass to do so. And I love how the Garmin Verb is all integrated. I also like that the Garmin Verb XE can be controlled by your iPhone or Garmin bike computer. That is awesome. The Garmin Verb is also small and lightweight. It only weighs four ounces, which isn't too bad. So let's watch and listen to some of the sample footage I took yesterday. It's from late in the day on an overcast day, so the video doesn't look great, but listen to how awesome the, video, the audio is. Also, notice that my speed and heart rate are displayed in the video. That is so cool. It's awesome, yeah, I know. It was my... Yes, Fox. The Verb XE is compatible with GoPro mounts, which is fantastic. As with my GoPro cameras, you can't tighten the damn mounts tight enough. Uh, GoPro gives you a plastic key to use. The Verb, actually, the knob on the Verb has a standard Allen key, so you can tighten it a lot better just using tools that you probably already have on your bike. That's, that issue with the mounts is really a GoPro problem. It's, they undersized their mounts and even all my GoPros had the same issue. The mount didn't hold the camera secure enough. And unfortunately Garmin has to make a camera that's compatible with GoPro mounts or they'd be shooting themselves in the foot probably. The Garmin Verb XE doesn't have a live video screen like the Verb Elite did, but that's no big deal to me. You can download Verb or Remote Control for your smartphone, then you can use Wi-Fi to connect to your Verb via your smartphone and control the camera from your phone, and even see a preview window of what you're shooting. One thing I had no idea this camera had was, I guess if you lose your verb, say it falls off your helmet or comes off your bike for some reason, and is connected to your phone at the time it is lost, your phone can be used to find it based on its last known, known location, which is awesome. You can I, also use many Garmin bike computers and other GPSs to control the Garmin verb XE action camera, which is cool. I had trouble getting the Verb XE to pair with my Garmin Edge 810. I had to turn Bluetooth off. I also disabled Wi-Fi, and then I just enabled Verb, and that ended up being the key that worked.
Then I can actually start and stop the camera from my Garmin Edge bike computer on my handlebars. That is awesome. The camera came with flat and curved surface mounts. I generally don't use any of those. I mount my camera in one of six ways really. And I either mount it on my handlebars with this handlebar mount that I bought off Amazon or under my seat with another mount I bought off Amazon or I use a GoPro chest mount or I use a ram mount to mount it to my bike frame or I use a suction cup to mount it to the windshield of my car or I also bought the optional tripod mount. One nice feature this camera has is auto rotation. So if you mount it upside down or right side up, it will automatically take video in the correct orientation. Pairing this with sensors isn't hard, but I appear that to have um, paired it only with my heart rate monitor, even though I have a bike cadence sensor. I'll have to try to pair the cadence sensor some other time. So I don't have cadence in, in any of my videos. I'll still have to repair, I believe, each time I switch bikes, but that's okay. You can pair this with a Bluetooth ODB2 engine diagnostic tool if you have one for your car, which is pretty cool if you're into car racing. Opening the case is pretty easy. The battery is a little square brick. Battery life is supposed to be two hours, which is quite good. They've improved the micro SD memory card to be a spring-loaded slot instead of a little slide thing underneath the battery, like in the Verb Elite. So I like that. It apparently comes with some moisture-absorbing dots you put into the camera, probably to solve a similar problem other action cameras have where the inside of the case fogs up in cold weather or humid weather. When I first tried to use Verb Edit, and I hadn't used it in quite a while. It kept crashing. I downloaded the latest version, and it said I had to upgrade my Mac operating system. I upgraded my Mac operating system, installed the new Verb software, and everything worked perfectly. It did force me to upgrade the Verb. You know, you just get these things, and you just got to upgrade the firmware in the camera which I guess is typical. Garmin upgrades and fixes their software constantly. It's rather annoying to be honest, but hopefully they'll be fixing the inconsistencies with the data overlays shortly. Anyway, I have, I imported my footage into Verb Edit. By the way, if you're using a Mac, don't import the clips into iPhoto and delete them. You need to import them into Verb Edit to keep the the video and the GPS data together. After importing into Verb Edit, I added some gauges, created a simple movie, and it's pretty good. Video quality is fine for such a drab day, and the audio is awesome, just fantastic. So far, I do have a few complaints. Number one, when you plug it into the wall, it says it's going into charging mode and shuts off and there's no indication whatsoever of whether your battery is fully charged or not. When you do plug it into the USB port, you do see a battery indicator showing how much charged it is. So I guess they expect you to plug it into your computer and not the wall to charge it. I don't know. My elevation is way off. My grade is way off. Check out the whole, check out the second ride I did, how the elevation graph on the video shows it drastically going downhill very, very steeply. If you look at Strava, it's a very gradual downhill. So I'm not sure why that was so far off. Miles per hour is way off at times. It shows zero even though I'm totally moving forward. The G-force meter changes so fast, you can't even tell what number it is registering or showing. But anyway, that's all kind of typical of a new release of a Garmin product. Hopefully they will correct these issues in the future. But the best thing is the camera has great video and even better audio. So I am absolutely thrilled with this camera and can't wait for Garmin to make a few little fixes so that everything is, is pretty damn good. That's my initial review of this camera, and hopefully it's of help to you. Thanks for watching.